this is a quick demo video just to help people kind of have a ground base or ground floor for making sure their 250E sequencer is doing what they want. I can't go through every single step and feature of this uh, product because it's quite deep with different modes of uh, functionality. But if you're lost and you think something's not working, uh, here's something very simple that you can do, and that's just to use it as the most basic analog sequencer and set it how to set it up that way and to ascertain that everything works. Yes, my voice is completely shot. I'm sick, but uh, bear with me on that. Try not to sniffle too much. But enough about me. Here we go. What I suggest, uh, first thing everybody who has a 250E should know is there's a great shortcut for setting all of these 16 steps to the same parameter whenever you want to. So if I wanted to set all of them to advance or to any other mode of um, operation or to change the time base so that they're all the same, you don't have to go edit into the step, which is the blue LED once you're in edit which step you're working on. And as you can see, it's changing. If I want to make sure they're all on the same time base, I'm going to say, let's go with the top uppermost one of 0.01 to one second per stage. All that you have to do is be in edit mode. Select whatever parameter it is, if it's voltage for CV or any of these push buttons, it doesn't matter. Hold it, and then just turn through all the steps. And you've now set them all, as you can see. That's no longer toggling between different displays. They're all set the same. You could go in if you wanted to, such as this, and make step 14 actually sustain or enable if you wished. As you can see, it'll now switch between them. But if we wish to just set everything quickly, the Buchla Pilot's best friend is this hold and sweep feature. To do things quickly, you don't have to go stage by stage. So, very handy. Um, in this case, just to make sure your sequencer is working, and one point of confusion I'm addressing somebody specific here is um, this pulse LED. Now the all only fires, it's like an or, it fires when there is a, a, a pulse enabled on one or two or both together. It doesn't matter. A pulse will fire. It's not just a clock firing the whole time. So if I push this, we have the sequencer moving. You'll see I've enabled and disenabled or disabled. That's a better word or a real word. Um, the pulses. So this is what should happen. You'll have a pulse fire on the stage and this red LED lights up. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, that's how we do it. Now I have a very complicated patch going on with the router so I'm not going to really go through how to connect everything except to say just take voltage one output. <coughs> put all of your voltages into something. I mean, I've been lazy, so I haven't changed anything here. It could be as long as there's some kind of a change. And then just set these arbitrarily, the outer ones. And make sure you're, with this LED, selected voltage 1, which is CV out 1, so that you're not trying to do something and it's set to CV 2 and you don't know what's happening, which has happened to me a few times where it's selected here and you're trying to do something and nothing's happening. Just make sure you're correctly in voltage 1. And you have some pulses and you have to actually tell them to be on. So in edit mode, you have to actually push the button to get it to come on. So again, make sure you're pushing one and not two. And this is selected to one on the voltage outer ring, which is your CV output level. And um, the simplest connection is literally take the CV out, stick it right into the oscillator input, make sure that this knob is up either all the way or to some degree. We're just doing a test, so just turn it up all the way fine and then turn the pitch knob all the way down. So this one all the way up, this one all the way down. And um, your pulse you could literally stick directly into the 292E control voltage input so it's firing, it's pinging it. Or you could use the uh, attack decay generator, um, function generator. So in this case I am actually using it, but it's all going through the router. So if I push play again to get this show on the road after four minutes, you should have this guy cycling, and you'll see it's firing, and it should be opening this. And it should be that simple, really. Just, you can turn all these down just to make sure you're doing the right thing. Okay, so we know it's correct. And if a pulse fires out of edit mode, sorry. So if you're out of edit mode, remember edit mode just means what am I looking at on the blue LED, the selected stage. So that's why you will often see nothing happening. Hey, look, it looks like nothing's firing. Or it looks like something is firing all the time. 
just turn off edit mode and you'll see it gives you real-time update as it cycles so that should help you get started uh, just keep it super simple everything in advance then it works like an analog sequencer put everything into the same time base turn these knobs up they're all the same doesn't matter if they're up in the straight up position full left full right just so you have something consistent a consistent base and then um, turn this big fat knob here to get a speed that doesn't drive you crazy and that should be it